My lovely imps, we have to have a discussion. And unfortunately, this is a discussion that we have had to have a lot in recent memory. It's not an easy discussion to have, but I hope that you will stick here with me regardless because uh, because it's really goddamn important that we talk about this, okay? Um, last night in Colorado Springs, there was a mass shooting. And this was a mass shooting that occurred at a place called Club Q, which by the name, you hopefully can tell, it's a gay bar, okay? Now, some of you might remember that the uh, most deadly mass shooting in history, the, uh, the Pulse nightclub shooting, uh, also happened at a gay bar, um, and that was just a few years ago. We have had an unbelievable escalation of violence directed towards LGBTQ people um, who have done nothing wrong in every single instance. Um, we are not talking about people going after some, some, some murderer who happens to be gay. We're talking about innocent, random people being targeted while doing nothing against the law, while doing nothing. This is a uh, nothing short of, of raw bigotry and hatred. I want to start this out with something that's going to be a little bit hard to watch. So I just want to warn you that this is going to be a very difficult thing to watch together. And uh, again, I promise you we're going to talk about things afterwards, but we really have to open with the simple and raw truth of what happened. So. Please sit with me here and just take a minute. Seriously, don't go away. It's not violent. It's not scary or anything like that. It's just important, okay? So this was an interview with one of the people who was present in the shooting in Colorado Springs at the gay bar last night. Let's take a listen. As I was dancing on the dance floor, um, I heard shots fired. I thought it was the music, because um, there were no screams, there was no help, help, nothing like that. Um, then there were more shots. When I realized what was going on, I ran to the dressing room immediately. There was a customer that followed me, and there was a drag performer, uh, Delusional, who was in the dressing room. I made them lock the doors, and we got down on the ground and cut off the lights immediately. We heard everything. We heard more shots fired. We heard uh, the assailant being beat up by someone that I assumed that tackled him. We heard the police come in. We heard them yelling at him. We heard uh, them saying check certain people because they're critical. Um, we, we heard everything and all I can think about is everything. My life. Just everything. Friends, family loved ones. I came here to celebrate my birthday. Honestly, I was supposed to be in Denver, but I came back a day early and like, I just, it's sad. Joshua, what does this mean for the LGBTQ community here in Colorado Springs this shooting? It's, it's hard to say. It means so much because this is our only safe space here in the Springs. And so for this to get shot up, like, what are we gonna do now? Where are we gonna go? Yeah, we can rebuild and, and come together and this, but what about those people that lost their lives for no reason? Like the 18, other 18 that were injured, I could have been one of them. Like, it's, it means a lot because again, what are we gonna do now? How are we gonna feel safe in our, in our city. This was your safe space? Yeah, this was the only LGBTQIA plus space in the entire city of Colorado Springs. It's won awards in Independent Magazine. It's, I got my start here. Like so many of my friends I met here and people that I call loved ones and now it's shattered. Now that made me cry the first time I watched it too. <laughs> and it really fucking bothers me. And I spent last night in a really fucking bad mood. And 
and I know I said this was going to be really fucking heavy because it is. And I'm really even, I thought I was going to have an easier time talking about it. But you get really tired of hearing this shit. And you get really tired of thinking about the people that you love potentially being the ones who are hit next. And it's a lot, okay? Now, this guy was really pouring his heart out. And I think it's pretty obvious what this type of experiencing, no matter how strong you are, no matter how prepared and how, how maybe you could even say how, how numbed you are to the hatred that goes on in this country. There are some levels of extremity that hit even the strongest of us, you know? And this is one of those times. And this, the same thing happened years ago before I was a streamer when, when the Pulse nightclub shooting happened and seeing the way people talked about it and the way people thought about it and also the way that people forgot it. Uh, it's really difficult. It's, it's really difficult to, to make any sense of events like this because there, there really isn't any sense in it. The only sense is that there are people who irrationally hate people just for being gay or for, I mean, let's be honest, there's probably a lot of people who aren't even gay at that goddamn pub. But we're going to look through a couple of articles and we're going to look at a couple of other things here once I'm a little bit more composed. But I wanted to show you guys that because uh, this is the type of stuff that we simply cannot look away from. I believe that true and true. I am just a uh, gamer on the internet. Okay? That's what I am. I'm a, a entertainer who's very opinionated. And so a lot of times I just don't feel equipped at all to talk about any of these things or like it's going to do anything. But at the same time, you all are here with me now. We're all here talking about this issue. We're here looking with our eyes held high into the face of terror, into the face of people who genuinely do not believe that we're human. People who are so filled with irrational hate, so deeply, deeply radicalized by a machine of, of the of production of hatred in this country. And I'm happy that at least we can look at this guy's tears and we can bear them together. We can we can look at his pain and we can hear what he has to say. We can hear his words and we can at least listen to them together. We can at least keep that in our mind and keep that in our in our in our hearts so that we can have an idea of just how fucking important it is every single last space because the the bar that was just shot up was not some gigantic location it wasn't a, a madison square garden it wasn't the center of all of attention it was a gay bar in a relatively small town it was the gay bar in a relatively small town and it meant a lot to people it bind it bind there's a reason why they fucking target this shit they they know that humans need warmth humans need togetherness humans need connection and these small places even places like this chat even places like the various discords of all of these wonderful wonderful queer people that i i, I talk to and that i know online um these places are safe there are places where queer people can find one another, where they can find solidarity and strength. And also, we know why they target them. Because they want us to die. <sighs> okay. Let's get into the facts of the situation, okay? And we're not gonna stay, we're not gonna stay on the saddest part of this entire thing. I'm sorry if this was clumsy. I was trying to be as clear as possible, but it is really, really difficult to talk about. 
It's incredibly difficult to respond to this. But I do know one thing that we can do, and I do know one thing that we can talk about. But to do that, we have to understand what actually happened in full, okay? So let me just bring up the article, and we're gonna go and we're gonna read through everything that happened, okay? Here we go. The Colorado Times Recorder, this is a local newspaper to Colorado. Five, five dead following Colorado Springs shooting at LGBTQ nightclub. Five people are dead and at least 18 are wounded following a mass shooting event at Club Q in Colorado Springs, according to the Colorado Springs Police Department. Club Q is one of Colorado Springs' oldest LGBTQ nightclubs, and it regularly hosts drag shows and community events. According to Lieutenant pa Pamela Castro, the CSPD public information officer, the first calls regarding a shooting came at 11.56 p.m. on November 19th. The police department arrived at 12 a.m., and the sub suspect, identified as 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich, was taken into custody at 12.02 a.m. We know one or more patrons heroically intervened to subdue the suspect, and we praise those individuals who did so because their actions clearly saved lives. We're gonna pause there for just a second. We know two people. Um, this, this article uh, was posted pretty shortly after. We now know that there were two people who, who fought the gunman, literally fought the gunman. Now, they didn't have guns on them, for a number of reasons. Most clubs don't let you bring guns into them for obvious reasons. They fought with tooth and nail and they saved people's lives. I want you to understand that the mayor of Colorado Springs also made a statement thanking these people. Two people saved many lives. 18 people got hit, five people got killed. And because these people intervened, because these people took a stand and fought this guy down, countless others escaped including the man we just watched just a few minutes ago, who explicitly mentioned how he grabbed the uh, performers, scooted them over into the dressing room, locked down the doors, blocked the doors, and stayed safe. That type of heroic intervention can save lives by allowing other people to escape. Not every single person in the world is able or, or is going to be capable or even in the right place to be able to fight in that way. But some people did. Those who could did, and they saved a lot of people's lives. So I want, I want us to be clear about that, and I want us to understand, and I hope we get to hear the names of those people. I have not yet found an article that names them, probably for good reason, because if they were named, they would most likely be targeted. Just further goes to tell you the state of affairs in the United States, which we'll get to after this. But let's just say, holy shit, what a bunch of heroes, okay? Let's continue the article. In a statement posted to Facebook, Club Q wrote, Club Q is devastated by the senseless attack on our community. Our prayers and thoughts are with all the victims and their families and friends. We thank the quick reactions of the heroic customers that subdued the gunmen and ended this hate attack. Club Q is a safe haven for our LGBTQ citizens, said CP CSPD Sh Chief Adrian Vasquez. Every citizen has the right to feel safe and secure in our city, to go about our beautiful city without fear of being harmed or treated poorly. I'm so terribly saddened and heartbroken. Vasquez cautioned that the investigation is still in the early stages and noted the FBI is already on scene and assisting with the investigation. We are also working to identify the victims who have died and notify their families. Vasquez reported that at least two firearms were found on the scene that a long rifle was used in the shooting. Now, this is not a whole lot of information. A long rifle could mean a lot of things. Um, but again, it doesn't really matter exactly what type of weaponry was used here, um, obviously. On June 18th, 2021, so summer of last year, 
Aldrich was involved in a bomb threat in the Lorson Ranch neighborhood. According to a news release from the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, the reporting party said that her son was threatening to cause harm to her with a homemade bomb, multiple we weapons, and ammunition. The reporting party was not in the home at the time when she made the call and was not sure where her son was. Deputies responded to the home after further investigation realized the, subject, the suspect, Anderson Lee Aldrich, uh, date of birth 05 20 2000 was in the block of P pilgrimage road which is one mile away from the address our deputies contacted the suspect by phone and he refused to comply with orders and surrender the guy who did the shooting was already involved in a bomb threat an armed threat and evading the police now i don't want to jump to conclusions immediately but I think it's pretty apparent what type of position and what type of person you would have to be to get that sort of treatment from the police. To literally threaten to murder someone, to have arms and a, and a homemade bomb, and to not only walk, but to be able to uh, 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 avoid, to, uh, to be able to flee and resist arrest, okay? I just want to bring out the attention that the police do not do not treat everyone equally on this. We know who gets to get away with hate crimes and who gets to be arrested for walking at night and looking suspicious. Deputies evacuated the, the neighborhood and over an hour, Aldrich finally surrendered. Although Aldrich was charged with two counts of felony menacing and three counts of first degree kidnapping, no formal charges were pursued in this case, which has since been sealed according to the DA's office. That's weird. Michael Allen, the fourth judicial district attorney who declined to charge Aldrich in 2021, expressed sympathy for the victim and their families. This is a tragic day for our community. Blah, 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 blah. This is the guy who did not charge this guy after an attempt, after an attempted kidnapping and multiple threats of bo bomb threats and gun threats. Here we have the governor. The Club Q shooting in Colorado Springs was horrific, sickening, and devastating news to wake up to, said Governor Jared Polis, Colorado's first openly gay governor, in a Facebook post. My heart breaks for the family and the friends of those lost, injured, and traumatized in this just horrific shooting. I have spoken with Mayor Southers and clarified that every state resource is available to lo local law enforcement in Colorado Springs. We are eternally grateful for the brave individuals who blocked the gunmen, likely saving many lives in the process, and for the first responders who swiftly responded to this horrific shooting. Colorado stands with our LGBTQ community and everyone impacted by this tragedy as we mourn. The Club Q shooting comes after more, of a, more than a year of conservative politicians and commentators demonizing the LGBTQ community and holding increasingly violent protests against drag events. This summer, Representative Dave Williams, R. Colorado Springs, and Representative Mark Baisley, R. Roxboro Park, raised concerns about groomers at, Highlands, at a Highlands Ranch drag show. U.S. Representative Lauren Boebert, who in June said the left is grooming our kids, tweeted this morning, the news out of Colorado Springs is absolutely awful. This morning, the victims and their families are in our prayers. Bullshit, Lauren Boebert. Lauren Boebert is the most crocodile tears you could possibly imagine. This fucking monster goes around constantly demonizing LGBTQ people. And then, and I didn't even mention that today is Transgender Day of Remembrance. That is what today is. I know it's a small holiday that mostly only trans people ever take any time. And, but it's literally the day in which trans people take time to remember those who have died. Those that we have lost, which are many, okay? Corey Clayton says, groomer has been used so overused so much that it means the same thing as woke these days. Unironically, they are constantly pushing this narrative. Constantly. It is, it is nothing short of a, 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 a countrywide campaign to demonize 
slander and libel queer people as a whole. Let's take a look at this article because this is really, really telling. Anderson Lee Aldrich, five fa fast facts you need to know, okay? Anderson Lee Aldrich is the 22-year-old suspect accused of perpetrating a mass shooting at Club Q. He was, he was, keep in mind, arrested during the act, okay? So this is not like, oh, he's just accused. He was caught during the act. This guy's guilty. No questions asked. A gay nightclub in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The November 19th, 2022 attack left five dead and now 25 injured. The active shooter burst into the nightclub with a long rifle and opened fire inside just before midnight, Colorado, police Spring, uh, Colorado Springs Police Lieutenant Pamela Castro said. This is what we, um, <laughs> wow, look at this. The early morning news conference on November 20th. Aldrich was subdued by heroic patrons of the bar who were credited with saving many lives, Castro said. One disarmed Aldrich and beat him with his own gun, according to NPR. Wow, that's some Metal Gear Solid shit, okay? Dude went up and did the, the, uh, the CQC, the fucking close quarters combat. Whap! Heavy has confirmed that Aldrich is the grandson of outgoing Republican S State Assembly member Randy Vopel. Now this is where it gets very, very interesting, folks. That's right. He's the grandson of a far-right state politician, the former mayor of Santee, California. So this guy was a mayor in California, moved to Colorado Springs, and became a State Assembly member. Vopel re represents the 71st district in the San Diego area. Oh, sorry, 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 my mistake. He's still in California, not in Colorado Springs. Small error there, just wanna make that correct. There were calls to expel Vopel from the state assembly after he made comments comparing the January 6th attack to the Revolutionary War. Aldrich's mother, Laura Vopel, has written posts praising Randy Vopel on Facebook and confirming that he is indeed her father. And here's the quote from Randy Vopel. About, remember, about January 6th, okay? This is Lexington and Concord. First shots fired against tyranny. About January 6th, says Randy Vopel, who was defeated in a Republican primary in August of 2022. He said in a San Diego Union Tribute article just three days after January 6th, tyranny will follow in the aftermath of the Biden swear-in on January 20th. According to the San Diego Union Tribune, Vopel later tweeted that he condemned the violence and lawlessness. Vopel and his office did not immediately respond to requests for comments from Heavy. The first two victims named were the bartenders, Derek Rump and Daniel Aston, who were remembered in tributes for their kindness and vibrant personalities. You can read more about the victims here. Here are two of the people who were killed last night. Daniel Aston and Derek Rump. Aldrich was arrested in 2021 after his mother reported to police he was threatening to harm her with a homemade bomb and multiple weapons. Authorities, we're going to skip that because we just read that part. Authorities said the Colorado Springs active shooting is being investigated through the lens of a hate crime, but that has not been definitively determined. Interesting. Hmm? It's with a heavy heart that I have to tell you that we had a shooting at a local club this evening, said Castro, the police sp spokesperson in Colorado Springs. No officer involved shooting was involved. Hmm. Authorities said that Anderson Aldrich is a 22-year-old male. Authorities have not yet released a photo of Aldrich. The photos Heavy has found are a few years old, so he looks younger in them than he likely looks today. Some people are falsely sharing a picture of Raleigh, North Carolina Christmas parade suspect landing Glass on Twitter, saying it's Aldrich. Glass has nothing to do with this shooting. The other victims have not yet been identified. Two are in critical condition. The mass shooting broke out around midnight on November 19th on the evening in which it was hosting a drag show. It came in as an active shooting, Castro said. Police Chief Adrian Vasquez said in November 22 news conference that police are working tirelessly to make sure justice is achieved. Club Q is a safe haven for our LGBTQ citizens. So here's the, uh, here's the dude right there. Looks like I think this is the one right here. Yes, 
kicking the leg in the middle next to Randy, Randy Vopel. And here's the, uh, it's an interesting little hand signal he's doing there. Um, Here's, here's, here's his grandfather, Republican, running. Here's my promise to you. I will stand up for East County values, oppose the out of control spending and regulations and never ever join the swamp. Heavy was not able to find any social media profiles for Aldrich, but Facebook posts made by his mother reveal he had been dealing with mental health issues. And this is just more details about that. Let me see if there's anything else relevant to what we're talking about here. Well, that's, here we go. They're talking about the bomb threat. Here's the, de here's the evidence of the bomb threat, which we already saw before. The club promoted an all ages musical drag brunch and held another drag show in the evening of the mass shooting. Club Q called the tragedy a hate attack. It's obviously a hate attack, very, very obviously. Okay, so yeah, the rest of the stuff in here is really small details that don't really matter. I want to look at something real quick, okay? We're going we're gonna to look up, I'm going to show you guys a little infographic. Are you ready? Monthly counts of anti-LGBTQ plus demonstrations in the United States. This is a graph from, the Jan from January 1st of 2017 until yesterday, okay? Do you see, let's just, can we just chart how sharp this increase is real quick? So here we go. Boop. And over here we have a little color guide that tells us were they targeting a drag show or drag queen story hour. And as you can see, right around right around this part of the year actually oh my god it was just a little bit earlier in the year when oh what was who were the accounts who were the people that were making a big deal about drag shows and drag queen story hour do you guys remember could it have been matt walsh chaya Raichik, aka libs of tiktok could it have been tim pool could it have been steven crowder could it have been tucker carlson could it have been Fox News? Could it have even been some other uh, right-wing influencers, people who now want to call themselves le leftists, but also seem to have a big issue with drag, drag queen story hour and other drag events? Yeah, somebody's, br somebody's bringing up someone whose name involves a shoe, but let me be completely honest. Shoe, uh, while absolutely engaging in this type of rhetoric does, I will say, I'll give just the tiniest drop, doesn't quite go quite as hard. But don't think that washes your hands of it. And I hope you're listening to this. I hope you're listening and seeing this right now and you really, really, really fucking think twice before you post shit like this again in the future. Now, many of you will know that for the last couple of weeks, uh, Myself and many other people in this space have been embroiled in an argument, an ongoing argument, about whether or not it is fair to say that there is an ongoing genocide against trans people and queer people in the United States of America. And I really, really, really want people to just take a second and take a deep breath and recognize exactly what's going on here not just to recognize the objective facts, the, the literal data, the literal data on just how absolutely unhinged the rhetoric against trans people uh, has been and how that rhetoric has directly, directly led to a massive increase in anti-trans, anti-LGBTQ protests that are going on. These are against the people that are involved Okay, we're not talking about they're protesting the, 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 oh, we don't like this law, the way this law is worded. They are protesting the existence of queer people. Okay? If that wasn't enough, 
Can we not please, for the love of God, acknowledge the bloodshed, the literal stochastic terrorism and murders that are being meted out on innocent queer people all over this country? This is just the latest and the loudest. Not to mention the countless others who wish that they could do something not like this, the countless others who are begging and praying with every single post that they make that this happens again. Do we not recall the bomb threats called into a fucking children's hospital? The people who are unwilling to acknowledge the state of affairs that we are in, the people who bury themselves, their heads in the sand, the blood is on your hands and history will remember you exactly like it remembers the people who stood by in World War II, the people who stood by during the Holocaust. And I don't want to get off on too much of a note but just keep in mind that over on Twitter, one of the world's largest social media platforms, right now, multiple people directly involved in spreading this hate have been unbanned, have been allowed back onto their platform. The Babylon Bee, Donald Trump, and Kanye West. And I want you just to notice, take a look at what Kanye West posted today when he got back. I wonder what Kanye West and Elon Musk, who liked it, could be trying to signal at when he gets unbanned and come back, comes back and says, Shalom, which by the way, is the traditional Jewish greeting. You are in denial if you don't think that we are living through an absolutely equivalent time to the, uh, the pre-World War II era of Germany. We are in the modern version of the Weimar Republic and everything doesn't fold out exactly the same because well, the fucking internet exists for now. The internet exists and, but guess what? Stochastic terrorism was happening all over Germany. Jewish people were driven out of their shops. Jewish people were driven out of their collective, their, their, their uh, communities. They were driven into ghettos. Trans people, queer people, and disabled people were treated exactly the same. They were driven out of their communities. Their businesses were vandalized. They were targeted. They were slandered. There were newspapers publishing every single day, oh, all this, this made up libelous garbage about an entire group of people who has done nothing wrong. It is following the exact same pattern. And if you are not able to fight against this, you have blood on your hands. You will be remembered by history as someone who stood by to let this all happen again. But, my lovely imps, do you know who will not be remembered that way? You and me. You and I are not going to be remembered that way because I'm not going down without a fight. I'm not backing down and I'm not afraid, not even a little bit. Do you understand that? I might just be a gaming streamer on the internet. I might just be a little politi small time political commentator, but I am not going to go down with a fight without a fight. And I am not going to be forgotten. And you are not going to be forgotten. Yeah, for those who don't believe me, by the way, here's the proof. This is a real tweet from 3.17 p.m. today. We got people here going all about it. It did not take long. It did not take long for Germany to spin full on into the Holocaust, but it did take a lot of energy from people who were highly, highly motivated to make it happen. These propagandists, these liars, 
These people who go and do cover and genocide denial, who play little word games on the internet, they are the gears of the machine of genocide. And genocide is not a single act. Do you understand that? That's part of what makes it so fucking dangerous. It's not one person that does a genocide. It's a lot of people. It is a machine that is built. It requires breaking down people's rational thought processes, turning them into machines of hate. It requires building thought terminating cliches that shut off people's critical thinking skills and that encourage reaction on based on hate as opposed to any sort of rational thought or compassion. And this has been building in our country for a very long time. I have been shouting about it, literally, since the beginning of my career on this goddamn, godforsaken website. It's not a, it could happen here. It's an, it is happening here. It is happening now. We are watching as the propaganda machine fires up again and again and again, and it is louder now than it has ever been. The propaganda machine against queer people, against all queer people, against gay people. Have you not seen, have you not seen that people like Matt Walsh are pivoting to targeting gay marriage? They're not just satisfied with persecuting trans people, but you should care that they're fucking persecuting us. You should fucking care. You shouldn't just care for your own goddamn skin. Gays aren't next. This was a gay bar. It was targeted on Trans Day of Remembrance. It was targeted because of a drag event, but it was gay people who died. Let me give you another example because this is what made me mad this morning, okay? I'm just gonna show you something, okay? Yesterday, I posted a tweet. This was long before this shooting happened. I didn't know, I had no way of knowing, obviously, I have no way of knowing any of this is gonna happen. Gun discourse is always funny, especially on the left. I have a gun, you don't believe in having guns. If you don't want me to have a gun, are you gonna take it from me? Are you gonna join forces with fascists to make me surrender it? And to this tweet, this was what was replied this morning. You can see it right here. I just wanna bring attention real quick to the timestamp here, this was 10.30. I woke up this morning and I received this message. This actually just happened to be one of the first messages that I saw this morning. And this guy said, this guy, by the way, I took a whole bunch of screenshots just because this guy was in my comments all of yesterday. I'm talking dozens of replies at me with next, with, with I responded to him one time, but he decided to come back this morning after the shooting to tell me this. Worth pointing out that since I started arguing about this last night, there has been one mass shooting that I know of. And of course, he went on to say a whole bunch of other things. Let me just bring those things up so I can give you an so I can give you a taste of exactly what I've been dealing with with this guy. Okay? Let me just show you. Here we go. Here is what he replied with. I said Using a mass shooting in a gay bar last night on the eve of Transgender Day of Remembrance to try and say I told you so is so disgusting. Cisgender liberal freaks are not only cruel in their advocacy, but also patronizing. Also, two people fought the gunman, buying time for others to escape. And his response was, wow, you, Ted Cruz, and the NRA are all telling me it's too soon to talk about it. Thoughts and prayers, I guess. That, right there is distilled why people say scratch a liberal and a fascist bleeds. That right there. Because to liberals, they don't have any skin in the game. They don't have to, they don't have to be explicitly anti-Semitic. They don't have to be specifically explicitly transphobic. They can just sit on their, on their back legs and provide cover. They can just sit back and provide cover for these people. And this is the shit that we have to deal with. This is the shit that I have to deal with. 
I'm just a fucking game. I'm just a trans. I'm just open about being trans and a, and a gaming and politics streamer. And I have to deal with this fucking shit. I have to deal with people messaging me on the morning after a shooting in which people that, that are, that I am grouped in with, the people that are, are like me were killed for no reason and deal with people like this messaging me to literally dance about it, to flaunt about it. Disgusting. It's disgusting. And it's really, really, really common. There is an entire faction of so-called liberals on the internet who do this all the time. They spend their time trying to tell trans people that they are crazy for saying this is bad. People who are literally calling us retarded because we say that there is an ongoing genocide of us and other people like us in this country. But let me tell you, there fucking is. And don't let anybody try to tell you otherwise because these motherfuckers do not look at history. They do not care. They don't have skin in the game, but you do. And we are gonna follow rule one. Do you all remember what rule number one is? The only order that I will ever give on my channel. I don't order people around because I think that's parasocial and weird, but there is one order that I will give. Do not fucking die. And the reason why I chose that to be my rule number one, the only rule that I ever issue in this community, is because survival as a queer person in a climate like this is revolutionary in and of itself. They want us to die. They want us to be quiet. They want us to disappear. They want us to not have words to call art to identify ourselves. They want us to believe that we are that we are animals. They want us to believe that we are that we are subhuman. They want us to believe that we are degenerate, but we are not. We are beautiful, wonderful creatures. And some of us are very scary creatures. And some of us will bite back. In fact, last night during the shooting, many people lived specifically because two of us fought back. And I wanna take a moment here before I move on to any other part of this conversation. Listen closely, all of you who are here, all of you who are listening to me, all of you who have heard my declaration that I am not going fucking anywhere, that I will fight tooth and nail until my last drop of blood is squeezed out of me, until the literal life is choked out of my goddamn throat, I will fight you fucking hateful motherfuckers. And I know there's a whole lot more people just like me in this chat over here, but there's even more out there, out there in the world. There's even more queer people just like me. And a lot of them are even tougher than I am. But before I move on to anything else, I want you to recognize that this does not go, this does not just affect one group. There is a massive uptick in anti-Semitism. There is a massive uptick in racism. There is a massive uptick in homophobia alongside the transphobia. It just so happens that right now, the tip of the spear is trans people. Trans people are being used as the knife that gouges into every other a uh, group that has been labeled undesirable throughout time. All of the people who aren't the, wa the, the wasps, the white, Christian, cisgender, uh, normal people. But there's more of us than there are of them, by a long shot. If all of the Jewish people, all of the people of color, all of the trans people, all of the gay people, all of the bisexuals, asexuals, pansexuals, all of the uh, black people, all of the Asian people, all of the Indian people, all of the native people and indigenous people, if we stand together, they do not stand a motherfucking chance. They do not stand a goddamn chance. Not only will they be dustbinned just like they were on World War II, we will hopefully ensure that they never, ever, ever gain a foothold in our world again. It's not just queer people in this. We're not in this alone. 
we're not in this alone. And the same thing goes for all those other groups that I mentioned. Jewish people out there, we stand with you. People of color out there, many of whom are queer, people who are non-people of color, we stand with, with you. We are going to stand together and we are going to fight tooth and nail. Some of us have no choice but to flee. Some of us have no choice but to hide. Some of us cannot, sim cannot simply pick up and fight. That is not how, that's just not realistic. But we all will do what we can. We all must do what we can. And that requires us as individuals. See, that's right. I'm talking to you right now. This is the, the second most parasocial moment. The first being when I told you, don't fucking die. This is the second one, but I want you to understand that I'm speaking to you, my lovely, lovely imps. All of you who are listening right now to my voice, take a second and notice yourself. You have to do whatever you can. I can't tell you what it is that you can do because I don't know your life. I don't know every single detail, okay? But you have to do what you can and that requires everyone, every single one of us, myself and all of you included, to take a moment and say, what can I do? Is there any way that I can help queer people survive? Whether it's something as simple as fighting disinformation and, and reporting hate to uh, protecting people yourself putting your body on the line, if, you're, if, that, if that's within your ability, whether it's giving some space, whether it's hiding somebody. If you think that we're very far away from what happened in the Holocaust, keep in mind that let us, let us say, let's pretend that it's 1933 right now. How many years did it take from that moment when everything just seemed to be tumultuous until there were literal furnaces burning people alive. How long? Shocking. Less than 10 years. Less than 10, less than five years. We have to take this seriously. We have to be ready. We have to think about the ways that we could hide people. We have to think about the ways that we can protect people online. And it is going to take a lot more than just me to do that. A lot more. But I'm going to do my part. That is a promise. It can happen in the blink of an eye. We need to start getting safe houses and stuff set up for those that need to flee. Some, of, Many of us are doing that already. Um, but there's... but. It requires a lot of people to be able to do that. And one of the things that we can do is ensure that we have communication set up. We need to be able to have Discord servers, groups where we can find one another safely. In the video that we opened this with, which even thinking about it makes me want to cry again, notice what, notice what Joshua said in that video. Joshua said in that video, that this was the safe space. This was their place to be safe together, to find each other and to know one another, to see one another's face and to form connections with one another. We have to keep building those. We have to build them and we have to protect them. Physically, mentally, emotionally, politically. We need to build and we need to protect. We need to care and we need to think about others. Community building is something we all can do. Yes, by, by, by opening your heart and being brave enough to connect with other people, to make human connections, to, to step out into the world and live, to connect with others with deliberation and purpose, to save one another's lives. That is something all of us can participate in, every last one of us, and many of you already do. But I want us all to I want us all to min max that shit, okay? I want you to I want you to do this like you would like you would do the things that you love. I know that this is painful. I know that looking at these things is scary, but I assure you that doing something about it will not only literally save lives, but it will make you feel a whole lot better in the process.
if you find, by the way, this is just a moment where I'm just going to take a second and say, if you find yourself in a red state, get the hell out. Get out. And reach out to people. See if there's a way that you can go and live with a friend that you can get established somewhere else. I'm not saying that there will there is going to be people who are going who cannot leave a red state. If that's you, we will try to help you to the best of our ability. But if you can get out, get the hell out and get somewhere safe. Because if you get somewhere safe, you can build up your footing. You can you know sustain yourself somewhere, and you can help others when if the time comes. Now, I want to look over something real quick, okay? Okay? I've gone over this on stream before, but we're going to take some time now. We've got a lot of people here who are, seems, very awake and paying attention. So I want you to pay close attention right now, okay? What we're going to go over is the 10 stages of genocide. Now, many of you are very familiar with the 10 stages of genocide. And I will agree that the 10 stages is not the only way, nor is it the perfect way to understand a genocide, but it is very helpful as a model. And the reason why it's helpful as a model is because it proposes a machine. It shows, it begins to highlight how genocide is not a single action. It is a accumulation of certain types of action, all of which are bad in and of themselves, stigmatizing people, we're going to get into all of the details of it, but that these actions build on one another. They build on one another, and their conclusion is a holocaust. Let's look through these real quick together, okay? Ah, yes, the pyramid of hate. That's another good one. Let's take a look at the 10 stages real quick. The 10 stages of genocide. According to the, according to the, this is the Montreal Holocaust Museum, they define genocide as a human phenomenon that can be analyzed and understood and consequently may be prevented. According to academic and activist Gregory H. Stanton, genocide is a process that develops in approximately 10 stages described here. The stages do not necessarily follow a linear progression and often coexist. Prevention measures may be implemented at any stage. We have to fight tooth and nail, no matter how bad it gets. And let me say this before we jump into this. I know I've said a lot of things, but I want you to understand why I'm saying this. A genocide takes a lot of energy to, to maintain, okay? It takes a lot to make people hate, hateful. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of money, a lot of power, a lot of uh, of repeating of propaganda, a lot of machines of war. It's a very expensive process. The more you gum it up, and there's a lot of ways to gum up this shit, the more we fuck shit up for people who want to do this, the less likely it is that they're ever going to be able to pull off something like the Holocaust again. And I would love it if it never happened again. If five years down the line, no, no death camps were opened, we won. That's a victory. That is a victory. It's not a victory to still slightly exist after a holocaust. That is just survival. It is a victory when we stop it from happening by defeating the people who push for genocide. And they're helpful yes men. They're useful idiots. Because a useful idiot in the face of this type of hate is an enemy until they change their goddamn mind. Understand that. Let us continue. One, classification. Groups in a position of power will categorize people according to ethnicity, race, religion, nationality, employing an us versus them mentality. Now, many definitions, this one doesn't include other groups, but as you know, I did a video about this. I did a whole video about this. Most definitions of genocide, most modern accepted definitions of genocide uh, include all kinds of different categories, political and cultural. Uh, ethnicity, race, religion, or nationality are not the only definitions, but they are certainly common ones. Prevention, create universalistic institutions that foster social cohesion. Basically, don't try to make an us versus them mentality about entire groups of people. Two, symbolization. People are identified as Jews, Roma, Tutsis, trans people, and made to stand out from others with certain colors or symbolic articles of clothing.
Three, discrimination. A dominant group uses, now by the way, prevention, ban the symbols and hate speech and all clothing meant to discriminate against groups. This would be like banning, by, like websites banning the use of the term groomer. Groomer is one of these. Symbolization, that is saying that all trans people are groomers because of whatever idiotic things they pull out of their ass to invent, that is symbolization in a nutshell, just so we know. Three. Discrimination. A dominant group uses laws, customs, and political power to deny the rights of other groups. Wow, that sounds mighty familiar, doesn't it? Like the slew of laws that I covered just in my in one of my most recent videos called This Should Concern You. Has a big trans flag on it. Go watch the video. Laws, customs, political power all across the U.S. right now, there is a massive, massive spike. I'm talking hundreds of anti-trans laws being pushed. Some of them succeed, some of them fail. Doesn't matter. The fact that they're trying, they're pushing for this, and many of the laws are succeeding fits this definition perfectly. Yeah, I'll link the site. Here you go. Again, there's many different versions of this. This is just the one that was sent to me right now. Four, dehumanization. The diminished value of the discriminated group is communicated through propaganda. Parallels are drawn with animals, insects, or diseases. Hey, some of the most popular right-wing figures right now are pushing the idea that being trans is a social contagion. Oh my God. It's pretty fucking blatant, isn't it? Prevention, promptly denounce and punish perpetrators and make hate crimes and speech culturally unacceptable. Culturally unacceptable. That means you can't necessarily ban their speech and maybe you shouldn't, we could even have an argument that some types of speech shouldn't be banned totally. But you culturally reject it. That means every single one of us has to slam down on these bigoted motherfuckers at every opportunity that we can. Make it unacceptable to, to call trans people groomers. Make it unacceptable. You say that shit, you're done. You're out of your job. You're out of your fucking workplace. You're kicked out. Ostracize those motherfuckers. Sanction all incitements to commit genocide. Socially punish people for acting like that. Five, organization. A state, its army or militia genocide uh, design genocidal killing plans. Now this one's an interesting one because this takes lots of forms, doesn't it? Now, some of you will remember in my last video, I went over the Texas GOP's platform. The Texas GOP's platform intends to ban HRT, a medically necessary medical regimen for trans people that, that is proven overwhelmingly for decades to improve the likelihood of survival for trans people to alleviate pain they want to ban this these are states now also recall while in this particular case it doesn't fit the design genocidal killing plans please recall that only two years ago two three years ago now when president trump was it was was still in power the military banned trans people. The military banned trans people for no reason, for no coherent reason. The military leaders even opposed it, but it went through because remember, the president is the commander in chief. So he has the final say over the military, which is a little bit absurd, but all right, that's just the way it works. The military was used as a part of a plan to genocide people. Even if the military's explicitly stated wording was not to kill them, it was just to ban them because they were too degenerate or whatever. That was a part, a state, its army or militias design genocidal killing plans. And let me, rec let me just remind you that militia membership on the right has gone way the fuck up. Do you remember when the the drag brunch in Idaho just a few months ago was uh, a, a, a a armed attack by a Patriot prayer militia was thwarted? They got caught with 30 armed guys in a truck about to go attack a a uh, a drag brunch. Do you guys remember that? Because I do. I remember that. Let's continue. 
Six, polarization. Propaganda is employed to amplify the differences between groups. Interactions between groups are prohibited and the moderate members of the group in power are killed. Prevention, protect these moderate members and human rights groups. Seize the assets of the oppressors and refuse their access to international travel. Now this is a complicated one because we definitely have a unbelievable amount of propaganda being employed to amplify the differences between groups. Interactions between the groups are prohibited and the moderate members of the group in power are killed. You know, isn't it kind of odd that Donald Trump and his loyalists, that the most extreme right-wingers have adopted the term rhinos, Republicans in name only, that it's been that moderate Republicans have become under the gun, have become targeted by the most extreme Republicans, almost sounds like the Republican Party is currently shaping up to depose and or kill members of the Republican Party who aren't successfully in lockstep with their extreme agenda. And we're, by the way, we're on step six out of 10. And we've got six, we fit just in the U.S. so far, all six of those are checked off. 60% of the signs of genocide are currently happening in the United States right now. Yeah, do you guys remember the rhino hunting ad? Holy shit. They literally made an ad about killing moderate Republicans. A Republican did that. Let's continue. Seven, preparation. Victims are identified, separated, and forced to wear symbols. Deportation, isolation, and forcible starvation. Death lists are drawn up. Now, we're not here yet, at least not explicitly. Although both, I will note that both Ohio and Florida have put forward making lists, registries. I'm not kidding you. I'm not even exaggerating. I talked about this in my other video. I'm not going to get into it here, but you can easily search this. Just go take a look. Florida and Ohio have both proposed making registries of trans people. Explicitly, specifically trans people. Eight, persecution. Victims are identified and isolated based on their ethnic or religious identity. Death lists are drawn up. In state-sponsored genocides, members of victim groups may be forced to wear identifying symbols. Their property is often expropriated. Now, we're not at this stage yet. We're not at the stage uh, um, of, of, we're not at this stage. We don't yet have uh, the state robbing uh, queer people directly. We have some indirect stuff. We certainly have this type of stuff for immigrants. Immigrants, we've been at this stage for a long time. But right now, we're talking about trans stuff, although that's very important. Brina says, a trans woman refugee self-immolated herself in Berlin, Germany in protest this year. We remembered her today. Let's continue. Oh, also, I should just point out real quick. What do you think is going to happen if Donald Trump wins in 2024? What do you think if he was willing to use an executive order to not only ban trans people from the military, but to also order his uh, health and human services lead to specifically target trans people? What do you think is going to happen next time? after years of him saying that the Democrats are grooming your kids, after all of his cronies uh, building up hatred against queer people, against immigrants, against people of color, what do you think is gonna happen? Do you think they're gonna, right now, when there's a Democrat in power, we have acts of stochastic violence exactly like what happened last night in Colorado Springs. People are dying by right-wing stochastic violence which is a new phenomenon, not entirely new. Stochastic violence was not a term that, was in, that had been invented um, at the time uh, uh, during the beginning of World War II, before World War II actually began. Um, 
but it happened. Uh, uh, magazines like Der Sturmer, these Nazi magazines, did inspire vigilante acts of of, uh, of violence. For example, the infamous the infamous pictures of children burning uh, books. That was an act of vigilante of uh, vigilante mob action. That was stochastic terrorism. That was not that was not state. That was inspired by propaganda. That was a vigilante act. Step nine, extermination. Massacres begin. The perpetrators see their actions as extermination since they do not consider their victims to be entirely human. Now, while we don't have state-sponsored exterminations and massacres going on right now, thank God, I can tell you that the rhetoric is there. In my YouTube con, I'm a gaming and politics streamer. I'm a small time gaming and politics streamer, okay? And my mentions are full of constant dehumanization. People saying uh, that I'm a monster. People saying that I am subhuman. This is all over the place. It's already here. And remember how this said that thing that these steps don't happen in chronological order, that they often coexist at the same time, that it's 10 things that happen, 10 pieces of a whole, as opposed to an, a direct progression. This is what I'm talking about. The dehumanization, the calling people groomers without any evidence, the, the frankly, the libel that is brought out against trans people now in the modern era and still against Jewish people. Literally, we were just talking about that a few minutes ago. This shit is already here. The dehumanization has already begun. There are already people, there are already a lot of people in the Republican Party who are ready to kill. They don't see us as human. And yes, as Killjoy40k brings up, wouldn't you consider denying trans people healthcare at all ages to be a unique extermination tactic that is targeted at trans people? I absolutely would. This is one of those things that could, that didn't exist fully, be, well, because, it, because the people who were trying to re research trans healthcare were literally killed by the Nazis. But uh, the denial of trans healthcare was not like a thing that existed at that time because like centralized healthcare was not the, did not exist in the same way. It is a unique approach that is, like I said, the modern form of Holocaust. One of them is saying, no, you will not be treated in the way that you needed to. You will not be treated equally to others. Your health concerns are not actual health concerns because you're a, a, a trans person. You're a, a groomer or whatever. AIDS is another example we saw that happen in AIDS. Yep. 10, denial. The perpetrators of the genocide deny having committed their crimes. Victims are often blamed, evidence is hidden, and witnesses are intimidated. Now we know that shit's going on. Groups like Libs of TikTok, AKA Chaya Raichik, who's the person who runs Libs of TikTok, you should remember that name. Uh, people like that do this all the time. People like the person who I reviewed the other day, do, does this all the time. They do the denial, they hide the evidence, they intimidate people who speak out, they blame the victims, they say, literally, I'm not kidding you by the way, the other day somebody told me that I was an uppity trans person for speaking strongly and calling out genocidal actions in America. Literally use those words against me, okay? I just want you to understand that's, that's the state of, of existence that we're in. There's a lot of these people. Do you know how big Tim Poole and Steven Crowder and uh, Libs of TikTok and all of these, and Tucker Carlson? These people do this exact thing. They intimidate people, they target, they victimize, they blame trans people. They say, do you guys remember that segment of, of Tucker Carlson we watched recently where he literally made up a story? This was the, uh, I'm so sorry I even have to say this, where he said the exploding milk porn teacher, the te the fake story, the literal fake news about the teacher with the big fake breasts, and then at the end of it, he opened it by saying, trans, these people, the he didn't say trans, said, these people are coming for your kids next. They're coming to America. They're gonna get your kids unless you patriots stand up for it. That 
is exactly what we're talking about here. Striped Kidder says, not to be too pushy about this, you're not, don't worry. While the genocide du jour is the Holocaust, I feel like the genocide of Native Americans uh, people in the United States matches well with the trans genocide. As far as I can t recall, there weren't really death ca camps or gas chambers, but there was a huge push of kill the Indian, save the man. Yeah, kill the savage, save the man, is I think what was said, which I find to be sort of in tone with the extermination of trans ideology. That's another one. There's another euphemism. Thank you for bringing that up. You are correct, by the way. Uh, I, again, I, I, I wish I could do even better on these segments, but the uh, trans ideology thing is a euphemism that is used to uh, imply that trans people are infecting people, that we're spreading these ideas that it's gonna get your kids and turn them into a gay or a trans. And uh, yeah, they don't have to necessarily. In fact, I don't know, I don't even know if a modern Holocaust would ever include the same types of death camps as we saw, or, or instead would just result in basically erasing the existence of people and letting them starve and die in the streets until there's none of us left. But guess what? We're gonna fight back against that. Killjoy40k says, literally two days prior to the shooting, people who said they have trans people's best interests at heart tried to fucking call me a groomer. Yes, that happened. Oh yeah, I literally showed on video a so-called pro-trans liberal, liberal streamer whose chat was calling me a pedophile for no reason. They, no evidence, nothing. They just wanted to call me a pedophile. I literally showed it on screen. That video is going to be up in like a day. <sighs> okay. So, we're going to talk about some stuff now that I think is directly important uh, to all of this. Um, we're going to just, we're going to shift our focus just a little bit because I've gotten all of the factual parts. I've gone through all of the things that I want to talk about as best as I can. Um, but I just want you to understand that much like the website we were just looking at said, much like the Holocaust Museum there said, this can be fought at any step. It is never too late to fight back to this shit, okay? Never, literally never. Until you are dead, it is never too late to fight back, even if all that you can do is just desperately strike out at the prison camp guard that's guarding you, okay? You can fight and we should fight, it is good. Let me end this bit before, and don't think that we're not, we're not, we're, we're not done talking about this. We're just going to change the direction a tiny, tiny bit here in just a minute. But I want this last bit to end on this. You are fucking important, okay? No matter how small you think you are, no matter how insignificant you feel in the face of all of this shit, you are important. Your survival is a revolutionary act in and of itself, and your defiance is wonderful and beautiful. Don't you ever let these heinously evil, hollowed out, hate-filled, demented, brainwashed motherfuckers ever tell you otherwise, okay? Don't you just remember, if you remember nothing else from this, fight these people to your dying breath. Because they're wrong. They are wrong. They've always been wrong and they will continue to be wrong, no matter how many of them there are, no matter how loud they are or how violent they are, they're wrong. Queer people are good. Jewish people are good. People of color are good. Indigenous people are good. And we will stand together and we will fight. You all ready to talk about guns? Are you all ready to talk about your fucking second amendment rights? Did you know that you have rights? You do. 1-800-CALL-MAMA. There you go. Better call mama. 
Did you know that you too have Second Amendment rights? Believe it or not, my lovely, lovely imps, the Second Amendment does indeed give queer people the right to bear arms. That's motherfucking right. It's super cool. Did you know that in constitutional uh, carry states, you could go right now, and as long as you got the cash, you can walk into a gun shop and you can be the proud owner of a nice, shiny firearm. Now, you shouldn't do it that way. I do not advocate, by the way, just walking into the store and buying a firearm, but you can. You have that right. I don't like guns. Don't worry. We're going to talk about all of it. Right now, we are going to talk about being a lefty and being a gun owner. Now, some of you, hold on, let me just bring this up real quick. I wanted to show you a story um, real quick. Um, oh no, I'm having a small brain issue. Ready? Here we go. Armed volunteers guard drag brunch amid protests in Texas. I don't think this is the same one. This must be a separate incident. Yeah, this is a different one. Where's the current one? Was it here? This one was from June? No, wait, it's gotta be newer than this. When did that happen? Somebody help me here. Where was it? Let's take a look here. Ah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry, I did not, I did not, I was not 100% prepared for this. Here we go. Want me every time I here we go. It's rare for people to post themselves committing battery and thinking they're in the right. When you're in court, this will be called Exhibit A. Confronting armed Antifa at a drag queen story hour in Denton, Texas. So this is a this is a right winger. Now I want you to watch here. See this guy keeps on trying to bunt me every time I walk by. Now this is a right wing. This is this is Alex Stein. He is a right wing conspiracy theorist. Okay. And what you can see here, you're gonna see in this video, that he is prevented from entering a drag event in Texas. And he is prevented because a bunch of battle queers, seriously, a bunch of heavily armed, motherfucking sexy, armed queers simply stood outside together. Wow. Let's take a look. You right? Oh, sorry, I should show you real quick. I should let you know real quick what a battle queer is, okay? Let me just show you what a battle queer is, okay? Because I, I talked about a battle queer, and I'm gonna use a video game here because, you know, in video games you can style up even without the money, you know, even without needing to have the money to style up. I'm gonna show you real quick, okay? This is a battle queer, okay? This is a battle queer, okay? This is a battle queer, okay? These are some screenshots from Metal Gear Solid V in which I was previously dressing up my character to show you a battle queer. And now I'm gonna show you real world battle queers. Let's watch this dope get owned. Dude, I'm walking down the street. I'm standing here, I'm alive. Take a look here, right behind, you see one of the battle queers. This is a guy protecting, as is his, constitutional right. That's right, Mama Goodman tells you it is your constitutional right to protect your identity. Sideways. Get out of my... All right, Alex, you need to leave. I'm not... So this guy pushed this guy over, and you can see here, this battle queer is, is, is armed up with what appear to be, uh, you know, body armor, uh, anti-ballistic, what are they called, ballistic plates, and also uh, has a nice rainbow flag here. Sexy. Leaving, guys. You guys, you're trying to get in my way. I'm here on a public street. Get out of my way. Oh my God, guys, I'm so scared. Now there are some real world battle queers, okay? And now this guy is gonna talk a lot of shit, but you'll notice he doesn't get into the event, does he? He doesn't. He's gonna make fun of these people, but he doesn't get his ass inside, does he? So he could talk and he can blab and he can act all smug like he wants to, but the little bitch ran away. The Antifa, they brought their play guns, their squirt guns. Oh my God, your arts and crafts time. Did this oh yeah, bruh, if that's a play gun. <laughs> all right, bro, bro. <laughs> Why don't you play with it then? Why don't you uh why don't you see if it's got candy in the magazine, huh? 
this is did this mess up your arts and crack time? You guys and you'll be able to go home and play with us. Why, why is it so tiny? Look how scary they are. Oh my god, this guy's so scared. I'm so scared. He's got his gun, his big gun, he's a big bad guy. Oh, oh my god. Now see, what this guy is hoping will happen is he's hoping he can piss one of these people off enough to hit him. But they're smart. See, because here's the, st here's the secret. Battle queers have an elevated IQ level. Battle queers are the most dangerous type of battle creature because most queers really do just like you know, hanging around and doing and playing video games and smoking weed with their sexy girlfriends or, and boyfriends and them friends and everything else. Uh, and, you know, they like doing the arts and crafts. But if you push us, we'll come and we're going to stand up for ourselves. We'll come. No, I'm just kidding. We'll come and stand out for ourselves. And we have an elevated IQ. So this guy thinks he's going to get some attention. He's not going to. I am so happy you're protecting these children so they can go get indoctrinated and go in there for transgender. And here, here comes the propaganda. This guy's gonna dump out a bunch of Nazi propaganda. Story time. You're such a good American. God bless this guy. Look at him. Oh, I'm scared. How dare you? <laughs> I mean, these people. These are the real cowards. They're hiding behind their masks. They got their little guns. I think. Look at all these sexy motherfuckers. By the way, it's good. Like I said. Mama Goodman tells you, you have rights. You have the rights to mask up in public. You have the right to be armed. You have the right, depending on your local laws, to even open carry your firearms. You can be a sexy battle queer. Isn't that sick? And no, ma no, no amount of snarky, soy boy, fucking low T, weak motherfuckers like this can tell you otherwise. And guess what? Motherfucker didn't get inside, did he? He didn't get to go in and harass the people inside. He didn't get to go in and spread his hate speech. He sat on the curb like a bitch. I think they're so tough. We're at a bookstore here in Denton, Texas, where they're trying to do drag queen story hour. And of course, the typical people here with their mask on, not able to actually stand up for what they believe in because they're all cowards. Oh, yeah? Officer, you think it's unusual they have their, their assault weapons like that out here in front of a place like this? Is that normal? No comment. I don't have any... Yes! This lady... Look, I'm not gonna... Look, a cab, okay? All cops are indeed bastards, but that's fucking funny, okay? That's fucking funny! I don't got a comment for you. Dude, I'm Amazing. walking down the street. I'm standing here. I'm allowed... Let him go sideways. Get out of my... All right, Alex, you need to leave. <laughs> I'm not But see, that's how, that's, these are the real scaredy cats. They're gonna- Wait, he's just replaying. He's re he didn't even get enough footage. Look, look at how fucking pathetic he is. He had to go back and re rewind and replay his own footage. By the way, this is his account that tweeted this. That, my lovely, lovely imps, is what a battle queer looks like in real life. And there's a lot of us, okay? There's a lot of us battle queers out there, okay? And guess what? There ain't nothing you can do about it. There ain't shit you can do about it. Because the Second Amendment covers my ass just as well as it does yours. So, we gotta talk about guns in general. But before we actually talk about guns, there's something more important to talk about. And you know what that is? That is, my lovely imps, this right here. Stop the bleed. Now, for those of you who do not know what Stop the Bleed is, Stop the Bleed is a uh, organization of professionally trained doctors who have come together to create a universally accessible uh, certification that teaches you how to deal with different types of bleeding. Uh, my lovely, lovely mods, could you please make a stop the bleed command in chat? This is going to be in our chat from now on uh, until forever, okay? Uh, go ahead and press, uh, uh, go ahead and make that into a command if you could. Um, stop the bleed is the 
number one most important thing that you personally can do to lower the risk of gun death and violence. Unironically, just taking a 20 minute course, 20 minutes, I've done this course. I have my Stop the Bleed certification, okay? You can go and do this. It takes less than 20 minutes. It's the easiest thing you can possibly do. And they send you a little certificate that you can have. Um, Stop, it, Stop the Bleed is so easy to learn and it does teach you how to save lives. Did you know that gunshot, it, the gunshot itself is not the most likely thing to kill you in an act of gun violence? Did you know that? Most people don't die from getting instantly shot in a vital organ. What usually happens is they become injured and they bleed out on the site before emergency uh, responders can get there. But do you know what stops that? If everyone nearby knows how to stop the bleed literally saves lives. There's a reason why thousands of doctors worldwide have come together to create Stop the Bleed at StopTheBleed.org, a course that anyone can take in basically every language you can imagine, and on the site, they sell you all of the supplies, the official, high quality, not fake uh, supplies. Actually, I'm gonna show you real quick. One second, one second. What you see before you is the most important thing that any aspiring battle queer can have. This is a first aid kit of my own making. It's nicely sealed. It's easy to transport. It's incredibly light. I can see what's inside of it. And inside of it, I have quick clot bandages. This is a technology that was originally designed by the United States military, which is a, I, I don't even know the science of it. They're really, really good. They are actually kind of expensive. So only buy, you know, only have enough of these. They're expensive, but whatever. This is a, a, a it's called quick clot. It's really cool. It's a type of bandage that helps your body stop the bleeding really fast. And also in here, I have a tourniquet. Now, you have to be very careful. This is called a, a CAT, a, a, I believe it's called Combat Action Tourniquet, uh, which you will learn how to use in your Stop the Bleed course when you take it, and I know you all are gonna be good queers and take it, aren't you? Um, yeah, it's got hemostatic powder in it. Um, I've got a whole bunch of other things in here. I've got topical uh, antiseptic and painkiller. I've, uh, I've got alcohol. I've got iodine, I've got uh, sutures, I've got uh, vacuum seals, I've got everything, okay? I've got a lot of stuff in this little thing. And it didn't cost me very much. It cost me overall just over a hundred bucks to put that together. That was the first thing that I put together before I put together my shooting kit for the range, before I put together anything else, that was the first thing I did. So, seriously. Um, it is incredibly important. You will, even if you, even if you never ever want to pick up a gun in your entire life, and that is a valid decision, just so you know, it's totally valid. I gotta take this off, I'm boiling. Note that a few things there expire after several years. Yes, 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 of course. Don't you worry, I know. Expiration is a totally different topic. That's for a different time, okay? Whew. Knowing how to stop the bleed means that if there is ever an incident near you, you personally might be able to save a life. It is not hard to stop bleeding and Stop the Bleed will teach you it in 20 minutes. So again, I'm gonna spam this link real quick. Open this up, bookmark it, and do this later tonight, okay? I have my certification, so could you. This is more important than owning a gun. This is more important than being a sexy Antifa queer battle queer, okay? Scarlet Volcano says tourniquets are good. A lot of people think they will lose their limbs, but this is a misconception. Yes, um, tourniquets are actually incredibly important, but what's more important is that you know how to use a tourniquet. If you use a tourniquet incorrectly, you're like, the myth that you're gonna lose your limb is not true. Um, modern medicine means that they can recover your limb even if it's been cut off from circulation for some time. Um, but you need to know how to use them correctly. 
take the course. Go take Stop the Bleed. It takes 20 minutes and you will become more powerful as an individual as a result. Unironically, I mean that wholeheartedly. It's especially important for battle queers. Battle queers need to know how to treat wounds. It's just true. Now, um, now, now is the part where we talk about guns, okay? Gun ownership is for some reason a very controversial topic on the uh, political left. Liberals are very, very, very against gun ownership. And to their credit, they have some good and compelling reasons for doing so. It is, of course, very true that in certain circumstances, um, well, and in fact, in almost all circumstances, generally reduced gun ownership naturally reduces gun violence. If there aren't guns around, if there are less guns around, um, then obviously less people are going to die from those guns. Um, there have been a lot of countries that have had a lot of success over the course of decades of reducing the amount of guns that are around, um, some places completely banning gun ownership. Now, we're not here today to talk about whether or not uh, total, uh, uh, total gun bans are philosophically correct or right or wrong. I happen to be of the position that I don't think that there is any way to functionally and safely ban guns that doesn't disempower minorities the most. Um, but that is neither here nor there. I live in America. Many of my viewers live in America. And in America, it is a fact. There are significantly more guns privately owned guns, not guns owned by the government, not guns owned by the police, privately owned guns than there are people. That's a lot of guns. There are guns all around you. And let me tell you, it is a part of the culture of the people that we have been talking about all night, the genocidal freaks, the Nazis, the fascists, the conservatives, the trad cats, the Republicans, those people have a culture of gun ownership. Now, a lot of them are very irresponsible with their guns, this is true, but they have a culture of gun, gun ownership. And what this means is that the status quo in the United States is that guns are not going anywhere. Not only does gun legislature fail constantly in the United States to the degree that d Democrats lose when they run on gun control because there are, as it turns out, are a lot of Democrats who support gun ownership and there are a lot of independents who will vote Republican simply because they believe in the right to own guns. It's not going anywhere. Even if somehow uh, Democrats were able to ban guns right now, even if we found out that Joe Biden found a way to ban guns in America, it, it wouldn't matter. There is no practical way that this would actually unfold. There are so many guns unaccounted for and accounted for in the United States that it is a simple reality of our life that we are surrounded by them and that our enemies gleefully wield them. And we can too. I do not believe in taking a handicap against people who very clearly want me dead. I have talked about this for years as to the reasons why I believe that queer people should consider gun ownership. Uh, and there's a lot of considerations that go into that. Gun ownership must be done safely, which means you need to take time to learn about the basics. And let me tell you, it's not hard to learn. There are literally thousands of books out there that will teach you everything you need to know, not to mention clubs and courses, many of which are lefty and queer friendly out there that will teach you how to be safe with guns. And gun safety makes a big, big difference. A lot of the injuries that come from guns are self-inflicted or inflicted by an a by accident. Um, and a lot of that comes from people just never learning gun safety. Those injuries and deaths disappear when people practice good gun safety. Are there cheap guns? Yes, there are, but don't go too cheap because it's a firearm, okay? 
Being responsible with gun ownership is very important. Many of my viewers who are, uh, who've been around for a while know that I advocate for the left building a fresh, new, totally fresh gun culture. A gun culture which, as I have done in this segment, puts safety first. Before you own a gun, learn to stop the bleed. Learn how to save someone from an energy, from an injury before you ever think about wielding a weapon, okay? Secondly, learn the safety, okay? Now that we've gotten that out of the way, please, my lovely queers, do not stop yourself from buying a firearm. It is your right, and your opponents are absolutely wielding them against you. Just last night, we learned first, just last night, just what we were just talking about, two people who were not armed with a gun, but who were willing to fight, were able to prevent many deaths. They were thanked by the mayor of the town because they stood up and, and fought the guy while others, so that others could escape, so that the guy couldn't be taking aim. And as we just saw a few minutes ago, with that stupid asshole right-wing Nazi freak uh, uh, trying to get into the drag event, none of those people had to shoot their gun at all. None of them even had to lift it. None of them had to put their finger, finger on the trigger. None of them had to do anything. All they had to do was show up and be safe. And they kept a lot of people away. Now, what we didn't see in that video is the other side of it, which is that there was a a uh, reasonable crowd of also armed right-wing protesters who were there to intimidate the drag show. We didn't get into that. Isn't that interesting? That literally, if it had not been for those battle queers, if it had not been for those masked up battle queers, it would have been drag queens trying to do, trying to do their arts and crafts, trying to do the peaceful stuff, inside in their own little bar versus a bunch of hillbilly freaks, gun-toting freaks being unsafe and swinging their guns around. But guess who showed up? The battle queers. The battle queers with the highest IQ you can fucking imagine, looking sick as shit, practicing good trigger di discipline, keeping their guns down, not, uh, not, uh, not fucking, uh, what's it called? I'm slipping on the word, why am I doing it? Not brandishing? In the future of this show, I am going to do very intense gun education segments. I'm going to be talking about general gun practices, but for now, I'm just talking about where I stand and why I think that it's totally good and re really fucking important that some of us battle queers get up to speed. And it's never too late. Remember what that just what the Holocaust Museum just said? Never too late to start fighting back against this stuff. Doesn't matter if you know nothing about it. You can start getting educated today. You might even be passionate about it. If you're like me, I grew up around guns. I grew up with gun safety drilled into me from birth, okay? Literally, my parents put me through a junior, had me sign up, they signed me up for the junior NRA. I did a gun safety course when I was like, I think it was literally when I was 15 so that I could have a gun when I turned 16, okay? And because of that, part of it, I kind of think, I, I, I think there's cool things about guns. I think there's cool, interesting, fascinating, and, and protective things about guns. Now, something that I should be, that I, I want to address. Owning a gun is not about the Rambo fantasy of fighting off a bunch of, uh, of hillbilly right-wingers that are personally coming to steal your butt plugs or whatever. It's not about that. That is not what owning a gun is about. Owning a gun is about making sure that you don't take a disadvantage against people who do want to kill you. It, it, it's about being able to defend yourself should the situation ever arise and you don't know what that situation is gonna be. We know that right-wingers have been churning out mass shooters, okay? We know that right-wingers have been churning out bomb threats. We know that right-wingers have been showing up armed in droves to peaceful events. That owning a gun is about being able to step up and offer protection to people who need it in those times. 
Community gun ownership, AKA multiple people having their eyes and their minds on guns in a shared space. Let me give you an example of that. Imagine that there was a house full of people and one of them was particularly passionate about guns and decided to teach everyone else in the house how to responsibly own a gun, that there was a gun safe that was locked with the ammunition and everything all you know kept separate or however, however degree you wanna go for it, nice and safe, uh, and everybody knows how to do that, even if there's only one person in the house who's super passionate about it. That is a form of community gun ownership. Multiple people have their eyes on it. There's no chance of it being uh, being picked up inappropriately. There's no chance of it being used inappropriately. There's no there's extremely reduced risk of people. Uh, you know, becoming suicidal and reaching for that because it's in a communally stored location where people have eyes on it and where it's locked up. That's the important stuff, okay? The community armory. And the community armory takes so many shapes, but it's very valuable. Now, whenever this topic comes up, lots of people uh, will bring up like, oh, but you know, trans people are at ex an increased risk of suicide. I wonder why trans people are at increased risk of suicide. Do you think it's intrinsic to being trans? Because that's a little transphobic. The truth is a lot of people will, a lot of people are transphobic and they think that trans people are just, you know, psych psychos. They're just sick or something. Uh, the real reason is because trans people are oppressed because trans people are treated like shit and they're persecuted in our society. So that's part one. And part two is, Guns don't become a suicide risk if they are stored safely. If you lock up your guns, if you don't pretend that you're John Rambo, if you become the high IQ battle queer, not just some gun toting hillbilly, but a gun, but a battle queer, a battle queer who uses their mind and their soul to protect the people that they love. And of course, if you do believe that you are at risk of, of a mental crisis, if you have a history of major depression, if you have a history of suicidality, it's okay for you to not own a gun. Nothing about what I say here should be taken as me telling people that they need to go buy a gun. No one needs to go do that. But those of you who can and are interested should. Does that make sense? I don't, I think, like I said before, a lot of people have to run. A lot of people have to hide. Some people aren't that type of battle queer. Some of you might be surprised at how tough and strong and capable you are. A lot of you have been sold the idea by many different people that you are weak, that you are not powerful, but you are. Your brain, your eyes, your mouth, your hands are powerful. I mean that, okay? What type of gun do you think provides the most utility for most people? An AR-15. It's that simple. Um, yeah, it's that simple. An AR-15 is the all, it's the all-around best option for most situations. It's a not too heavy of an arm. It is not too hard to wield. They are cheap. They are easily accessible. Their ammunition and parts are easily accessible. That is what you want to go with. Also, most states have very limited restrictions on weapons like AR-15s. Long rifles, as it turns out, because they're harder to conceal, don't have the same restrictions in most places that handguns have. Handguns are usually uh, you know, subject to a lot more legislation because you can conceal a handgun, you can hide it. Um, some places, like the state that I'm in, have constitutional carry, which means that anyone can open carry any weapon, basically, that's not like an automatic weapon or a rocket launcher, but basically any, any otherwise legal weapon, you can open carry it, which means not concealed. As long as it's visible and you're not brandishing it, you're good to go. You don't need a license or anything. AR uh, 5.56 AR-15 plus a 9mm sidearm is pretty standard. Yes, it is. A lot of people consider 9mm for handguns if you're going for that. There's a lot of different variety there. Uh, we'll get into that another time. I'm not going to go into the super specifics right now because that's not what I'm here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about is, is what I just laid out, which is the reason why queer people should not hesitate from getting armed up, okay? We need battle queers now more than ever. And the more battle, more responsible, high IQ, super powered battle queers that we've got out there, 
the better that things are going to go for us. Because if, let me say, let me say this. I personally believe that every single uh, gay bar and club uh, in, in, in this entire country at this point should have armed protection. There should be people who are willing to sit outside safely, responsibly, and of course, can, uh, 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 what's the word, uh, discreetly and protect these places. And the reason is because if you have people, if you have those battle queers sitting outside, those motherfucking rednecks, those fucking 22-year-old uh, 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 white nationalist uh, groiper idiots, the Nick Fuentes fans and the Tucker Carlson fans and the Steven Crowder fans, those motherfuckers are going to think twice before they pick your club to shoot up. And once again, Normie, not right now, but yes. Not right now, but yes. Armed bouncers? Hell yeah. Like I said, most of the time, in 99.9% in .9 of the time, these people will never have to put a fucking finger on their firearm. Because they're just there to say, we have rights too, motherfuckers. We don't go down without a fucking fight. I'm going to reiterate again. No one should cons should feel pressured to buy an, a firearm if you're not interested in it. If it's not something that you believe is, is going to help you. Not everyone is in that place. But you should consider it if you are. If you're in the place where you're ready to say, okay, I want to take defense, community defense, and I want to take self-defense seriously, first of all, go take a Stop the Bleed course. All of you, after this stream, go take a Stop the Bleed course. Seriously, go do it. 20 minutes, and you will be a stronger and more powerful person who could save a life. And then, consider it. Start learning about it. It's super easy to learn. I'm telling you, it's so easy to learn online. There are resources everywhere. The amount of gun channels on YouTube, excuse me, is through the roof. <sighs> Galay says, I don't think it's healthy for me to have one, but who, everyone who trusts themselves should be armed. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Those of us who do step forward, the battle queers, we will protect you, okay? That's what we want to do. We want to protect you. We want to protect the people who, who can't or don't want to pick up a gun. Because I get it. Guns are fucking scary, okay? They're weapons of death. Never forget that. It is a weapon of death. However, queers are entitled to weapons of death as well. We are not we are not going to, and nor will we be told that we should sit down and allow people to murder us. Do you understand that? Not every by the way, there's also there's also uh, degrees of involvement in gun ownership as well. For example, uh, not everyone needs to carry concealed. Some people will find it worthy to get licensed to be able to carry concealed, which means, you know, you can have a gun in your coat or you can have it, you know, hidden on your body somewhere. You can get a license for that. Um, and there are special rules, but not everyone has to be to that degree. Many American states are open carry states, which means that as long as you are showing your gun, you don't gotta have a license or anything, as long as people can see it and you're not brandishing it. Apparently even pocket knives can get you in trouble in Canada, so that's cool. Well, I can't speak for Canada, but in America, listen, everybody's got fucking knives in America. Let me tell you that, okay? Seriously. <laughs> Holy shit. So to summarize really quickly, um... To summarize really quickly, America is never going to outlaw guns. It simply will not happen. I, I want to drill that home, okay? The Second Amendment, the Second Amendment is the, is the right to bear arms. There is such a, de it is the right to bear arms. And by the way, by the interpretation that is you personally do, no, like basically no one takes the militia approach. It is a pipe dream. It is so deeply rooted in American law, the likelihood of, of gun ownership disappearing in America is that it, you're more likely to see America disappear, okay? I want you to understand that. It is deeply, deeply entrenched, 
okay? If you do believe in ultimate disarmament, I'm not gonna argue against you. But if you're someone who goes around telling people that they shouldn't own guns because, um, you know, because gun ownership is bad, and if only we could get rid of all the guns in America, you might as well be worried about whether the sky is gonna turn into mayonnaise. It's it's this it's demented. You are you are you are burying your head in the sand and you are unable to acknowledge the situation in America, which is that right wingers are angry and violent and heavily armed and American gun laws aren't going fucking anywhere. They're not going anywhere. It's just how it goes. I want people to be very clear about that. And I mean that. Like I I I just you can't win. Democrats can't win running on gun control. They don't win running on gun control. And when they do, when they do get into power, the gun control they pass is magazine limits. That's it. Magazine limits. Nothing else. That's the only laws they succeed at passing. Sometimes they will ban certain types of accessories. They never actually succeed at, at significantly banning guns.